Hi, welcome. It's Ruth here at artfulstampin.co.uk. Thank you for coming to watch my video. Hope you've had a great day. It's been super warm here in Wales today and we've just enjoyed a bit of a lightning show by our front door, which is kind of fun. So I've got a new stamp set here. It's called Pattern Play. And I'm particularly keen on getting patterns, sort of just generic patterns for doing masculine style stamping. And I was thinking it'd be nice to do something kind of bright and funky and maybe with some contrast. So I was thinking of perhaps some, um, you know, some black or some dark colours as well as to contrast with the the bright colours too so we'll see we'll see we'll see we'll have a play and see what we end up doing okay. anyway great to see you guys I can see a few people hopping on on the live thank you Blue, do share out this video if you've got any friends who you think might enjoy this kind of thing do you have friends who struggle with masculine style cards now this might end up being slightly more appropriate for children because we're going to go with bright colours but you know what, some guys like bright colours, I know my dad does, he likes bright colours. And then I am thinking of possibly bringing in some of these leafy elements so there we go, we'll see. See what happens. So let's go for something yummy and bright. Um, Bermuda Bay. Maybe a bit of mango. Um, maybe some old olive. Yeah, there was loads of lightning, but we had thunder earlier, but it it then kind of petered out. And it's just been very, lots of lightning. It's really bizarre with hardly any sound. So it's very strange. Actually, I'm going to swap that out for Just Jade. Or maybe both. Actually, maybe you have both. Okay, let's see what happens. And then... <clears throat> let's just create some patterns and then go from there. Shall we? I'm just going to get my screen up so I can see what you guys are saying. And then we'll get started doing some stamping. So welcome if you're new, if you're new to my channel, please do say hello. Even if you don't perhaps feel brave enough to say hello on the live or if you've missed the live, it's always great to hear, hear from you and your comments, things. Yeah, it's cooling down a little bit, but we, we had a little bit of rain this afternoon, but we could do with a little bit more, really. Right, this ink pad is quite juicy, so I'm not sure this was a good idea, but never mind. It's heading north. Oh, good, Christine. There we go. It will hit Deborah at some point. So. Right, so always the issue with a blank piece of paper. It's like, where do you start? You know what? I'm going to do something a bit crazy. Oops, sorry. Oh, it's been thundering down and golf ball size hail in Betsy Coid. Whoa, how bizarre! That is so weird. Hi, 
Kok dia pipi dia? Yeah, I knocked my stand, my metal stand, and it kind of reverberates if I knock it, and it, the phone seems to just kind of go boing. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not surprised you got a headache, Helen. The weather's just so bizarre. Hi, Glenna. All right, I better say hello to everybody now. Hi, Deborah, Vicky, Steph, Heather, Pamela. Oh, hi, Pam. Thank you for my gorgeous brushes. Hi Donny, who else have I missed? Steph, Nessa, Subu, Norma, Taffy. Oh, hi sweetie. You're right. Uh, who else is on here? Hi Linda. Oh, did you? <laughs> I did go, I, I went briefly on Periscope with the lightning and then also on Facebook. Has the lightning stopped? Um, I'm not sure because I've got the light on in my craft room and it's looking out on the other side of the house. We were looking out the front side of the house and um, yeah, it was all happening. Yes, yeah, so I wanted to go very bright and bold and geometric for this one. So this is, what's the name of this set? Pattern play. That's cool. I like that. Then we've got this fun one. This is like a tire track. Hi, Ellie. Looks like something out of the 60s. A lot of what I create looks like something out of the 60s, don't you think, Martina? <laughs> Welcome to the 60s. Now, what I like about this type of stamping is it's really fun to see how colours look different when they're stamped on white and then on a colour. So if you're ever into studying colour theory, actually Helen, my sister, Helen Joy Creates, she's been looking at colour theory and and how colours look so different when they're next to other colours. So this is really fun because you can um, really experiment with this. Now I don't know if you notice that I'm not doing anything diagonally, I'm doing everything kind of pretty square and uniform and I I just naturally do that because I think when you've got so much going on on your piece of paper, you don't need the added complication of having having things going off at a too funny angle. Not yet, anyway. I might decide later to do it. But at the moment, it's just nice to add colours and shapes and textures and see what happens. Right, okay. Got this one as well. Oh, I've got this. Hmm, not sure about that one. I'll just go that one. I missed that, um, Heather. What did she say? We don't want to confuse the men. A lot of things came out in the 60s. Hi Chris, um, not Christine, Anne-Marie, Caravan Crafter. And then I quite like also layering, you know, doing patterns, repeat, repeating them, that's what I meant, not layering. I'm already layering 
at repeating patterns and seeing what new patterns you can create by doubling, tripling, whatever. Now the thing I haven't done yet is doing what's called cross hatching where you then turn it around and stump it in the other direction. I haven't done that yet. All in good time. Hi Annette. Good to see you. Yes, it is quite tribal, isn't it? It's got that kind of feel to it. Okay, so that was Old Olive. I've done Just Jade, Old Olive, and then I'm going to do some Bermuda Bay. Got some circles here. Ah, it's nice to play with something for the first time. What colour is this one? This is Bermuda Bay, Sheila. Okay, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've stamped all these Bermuda Bay dots only on white. I haven't stamped any on orange. I don't know why, just it's ended up that way and I'm going to stick to that rule. So sometimes you might find yourself just creating rules as you go along. That's okay. So I'm happy with that. Yeah, I'd like to reserve the orange areas for, I don't know, just something different, I think. Not quite sure what yet. Got these kind of like funky star things. Anna, do those match up with those? Ooh. Ooh, kind of. Oh, right now, I might save that because I want to add some kind of deeper contrast in here and I was thinking of going for black or just something dark so we could go knight of navy or um, mossy meadow oh espresso Hi, Linda. <clears throat> what just to say, espresso. Hmm. Right, let's see if I can get these to line up. weird <laughs> that is so bizarre they do they make little viruses <laughs> that is the weirdest thing because when you look at it it doesn't sort of look like it's going to do that So bizarre. Oh, 
I know. <laughs> Just can't unsee it now, can you? Oh, not quite getting it perfect, but never mind. <laughs> now I get my mask on. I know I can get my mask on. I had a lovely present from Christine Morgan. Look what she gave me. And she said that she bought, she made it for me with this fabric because it reminded her of a one sheet wonder that I've done. Look at that lovely mask. Isn't it gorgeous? Okay, so that's my little viruses down. And I want to add more contrast. So here is that lovely... Oh, actually, should I make it a little bit more softer with the leaves? I think that would just make it look a bit more fun. Oh, hi, Liz. Just noticed you're there. <laughs> oh, this is nice. It softens it a little bit. I felt like it was being a bit, it looked a bit too harsh with all those lines on it. So having the leaves just helps, doesn't it? Sergeant Pepper medals. <laughs> well, you can tell who lived through the 60s, can't you? On this channel. Oh, did you, Liz? Sorry. I, did. <laughs> I don't always catch everyone's messages. Sorry. Good night, Helen. Oh, that's better. I prefer that now. Also, I'm not doing any stamping off, am I? I'm not doing second generation, so it's all very much pure colour going on here. So it's interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Right. Hmm. Having a wee little thing. It's quite unusual for me, this sort of design, but I think I'm enjoying it.
don't know what else to do really. Right, enough, says Nessa. Enough. <laughs> yes, all done now. Yeah, it's just a bit of fun. Should we have another go? Anyone want to pick any colours? Yeah, definitely. When it once it's cut up and you you just get elements of the squares because at the moment you just see these massive rectangles, but I think once it's cut up you won't yeah, you won't you won't notice that so much. So navy says Deborah. Okay. What about bright colors? Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> I want to go with some bright colors with the navy. Um, remember, it's masculine. I mean, I'm happy to do flirty, but if I've just got to keep it quite masculine. Uh, if I do Calypso Coral, that would look nice with. Oh, take care, Liz. Magenta. You guys, masculine. Masculine. You know, like in the title, masculine. <laughs> Granite or cinnamon cider. Okay, let's have a look. That's better. <laughs> oh, actually, I think I could live with that. Oh, they all wear pink. Oh, fair enough. Tashana, fair enough. That is true. Okay, so what I'm going to do, again, I'm going to leave the Knight of Navy till last, do some backgroundy type thing, and then, and then go from there, really. Okay, so... Um, Yeah, I've got the cinnamon cider in there, Nessa, so. Okay, so this time we're going to do some cross hatching. So cross hatching is when you stamp in one direction and then cross, cross over it at some point. Oh, I wonder if I could do this like Scrabble. So every one connects to another one. There we go. See, that's a fun rule, isn't it? With a long stamp like this. Try and connect it all together. Crisscross applesauce. Hi, Cindy. Yeah, it kind of looks like a disjointed plaid, doesn't it? Deconstructed. You get these, you know, on these chefy programs, they talk about deconstructed food. And this is us deconstructing a plaid. That's a good idea. It's Martina. 
I remember actually meeting a lady at a Stampin' Up! Um, convention and she said the same thing about her son that she he got a pink phone cover so nobody would want to steal it right there we go Yes, it would be fun to do this with only this stamp. I'm not going to do it this time because it's given me an idea. You said about using it but different colours. What I'm going to do is do cross hatching. But I this time I'm going in with this stamp and this has to cross over as well. See, look. So it's kind of like deconstructing even more. How fun is that? Just play with the pattern and I don't really have a great plan. I'm just looking for spaces and experimenting and oh, look at that, that's clever. It's sort of fitted in between there. Hi Suzanne. Looks like churros. Really? <laughs> oh, well, those two are the same. Hmm. Let's try and make that look a little bit different. Oh, night, Gina. Bye. Take care. Now, I probably shouldn't have rested my damp sponge on there. That wasn't a good idea. It's all right, that hasn't damaged it. So that was cinnamon cider. Some grey granite now for the tyre tracks. I'm looking kind of for spaces for this to fill now. Oh! Yeah, because you're an hour ahead, aren't you, Suzanne? This is from Playful P Pattern Play. Pattern Play. Yep. Now, I don't know why I didn't order the letter. I wanted to buy the letter dies. And I didn't order them. I don't know why. <laughs> Never mind. Next time. Did I hear you all scream when I put the chamois down? <laughs> yeah, it's not very damp, to be honest. I wet it 
either today or yesterday and it's been sat in my warm craft room so it's barely damp so that's why I wasn't so worried about it okay I like that so I'd like to bring in a Calypso Coral Really? Yay! Good on you, Tashana. Leftovers is good. So do you, oh no, you said lasagna, I was going to, I thought you meant, in my head I thought, oh, maybe she made like bolognese, I made bolognese on Sunday and I've frozen, so I made a big load and then froze some, but it's good when you've made a sort of tomato-y, meaty base, you can, you know, put them in tortillas or tacos or we usually have them in wraps. But then I guess I could make a lasagna, now I've got my meaty sauce. Oh, we've got two Anne Marie's here. <laughs> Hi, Jenny. Oh, Zuki. Oh, Anne Marie. I need a recipe because a friend of ours has just given us loads of zucchini or courgette, as we call it in the UK. And I made a fish and courgette curry tonight for our dinner. And I've still got loads of courgettes left. So, have you done that in your? Bread machine. Oh, you had your barbecue on the inside. Hi, Christine. Yes, I did get pattern play, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we always end up talking about food. <laughs> okay, I'm happy with that. So now I want to go in here and do something with Knight of Navy. I want something bold. I mean, I could put a flower. Not sure. I wanted something more geometric. Oh, that sounds nice, Christine. I'm just going to see if I've got some other patterns. one could go for an animal oh the little squares this one If we had a stamp saying nice and bold, yes, it would save a lot of time. Um, I quite I like the idea of putting something a little bit different. 
Oh, acorns. That's an idea. All the pine cones. Good idea, Batman. Oh, have you, Wendy? Fab. Just feels right to do a little cluster of two in the centre of those leaves. You ordered love of leaves. Oh, is that the the larger leaves in the mini catalogue with the stitched framelets? That does look lovely, actually. That's that. Set. You still have lightning. Oh, wow. Deborah's starving. Oh, don't talk to me about food. <laughs> Although we've just talked about food. Um, oh, now where's my little acorn lid? Oh, there it is. Yeah, I'm trying to do that intermittent fasting thing again. So I snacked at about nine o'clock when I shouldn't have really okay I'm thinking I want this to be a little bit more bolder but I don't mm, I think full strength blue might be a bit too harsh that's better that's good you've got an Aldi sugar free mint oh Oh, Steph's asking a, a health medical thing. So I'm wondering if the heat just puts extra pressure on your heart, Steph. Would that affect your swollenness? I don't know. I'd maybe think about eating to keep your... Ooh, a small dog cooling mat to rest your feet on. That's a good idea. Thanks, Linda. Okay, so after you've answered your <laughs> the question about how to cool your feet down, um, I wanted to ask you guys something about... I wanted to do a little fundraiser for uh, organisations working in Beirut. And I didn't know whether to... Um, I don't, yeah, I'm not quite sure what to do. I, I thought maybe I could do some One Sheet Wonders... And then just ask people to donate as they watch me. And then I'd auction off those special One Sheet Wonders afterwards. Or I could make cards from them and sell the cards. But I thought the easiest thing for me to do is to, rather than having you donate to me, would be for you to donate directly to my chosen charity. So... I think I want to choose, there's an organisation called Tear Fund that are working in Beirut right now. 
and I thought I could just put the link up in my live and then people could um, just donate directly. So, you know, I don't need to know how much or whatever. I just want to make people aware of the situation. I tell you what really struck me was somebody put an infographic, I think it was on Facebook, about if that explosion had happened in London, like the whole of like central London would have been like wiped. Not not people, just the the what the effect of the, on the buildings and stuff. And so I just think, whoa. And that's how it happened in the middle of Beirut, which is a thriving city, you know. It's just horrific. Right, uh, so I've done my little acorns. Um, I'm going to do some little leaves, I guess. I think they're little oak leaves. Yeah, and they were already, you know, obviously the whole world is dealing with COVID right now, but, you know, they're having to deal with that. So. And Lebanon as a country are already dealing with a huge amount of refugees who are coming from Syria. So they've nearly, like, doubled, not doubled in population, not quite doubled, but like the quarter of a po the population of Lebanon has just like increased like you've, you've imagined that the whatever anyway i can't remember the exact figures but it is a lot so they're already having to deal with displaced people you know who who want to go home but obviously syria is in such awful situation at the moment it's just unsafe for people to be living there and they, they a lot of them are escaping to lebanon so Oh, are they, Vicky? That's helpful to know. Oh, I know, Wendy. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay, Pamela. Yeah. Well, Tear Fund has got quite a good reputation here in the UK. They they are a Christian organisation, but they are working to relieve poverty and the situation. So um, I did sort of have a look at Red Cross. I mean, any any rep reputable organisation, I'm sure, would be a good one to support. But, well, if people just wanted to choose their own organisations, I'm not really... You know, it was just I thought it'd be nice to... Not nice, but you know what I mean. Helpful. Just to do a few lives, or maybe I'll choose a day. Um, actually, I could maybe do it Saturday if I do a few lives and then just ask people to donate while they're watching me. Yes, yeah, Steph. Um, I had a friend who... Actually, Scarlet, guys, you know Scarlet Pete, who has a YouTube channel. Um, she was on the ferry back to Hungary and they had to, they had to stop while they, I think, either pulled people from dinghies to the ferry or they just had to try and avoid them. So... Right, I am stamping off because I've already done it with the acorns and the the leaves. But I think the, the Knight of Navy is bold enough that it, it can cope with it. So that That's good, Cindy. Yeah, that's it. I think, you know, it's worth doing a little bit of research sometimes into these organisations. The other thing I noticed about the Tear Fund one is they've got... I don't know if you heard some of the horror stories about some of these organisations that go working places and then they were, some of the folk were abusing people. Oh, it's awful. Like, did you hear about that stuff with Oxfam? 
Anyway, I'm not saying that to tell you about that, but uh, that Tear Fund have a whistleblowing policy so that if you hear of somebody who's not working well, you can whistleblow. And I just think that's, they've open, you know, they've made that open. They've publicised that fact. Oh, that was it, Christine. There we go. They had to make sure they were okay, yeah. Christine's really good friends with Scarlett, so. Thank you, Pam. Yes, it's, it is working okay, actually, and it's still remaining masculine, even though there are lots of lovely details. I think, I feel it's sort of still quite masculine, so. And I think by just having those little focal points, it's worked out. Isn't that funny that I, I've done, I did the leaves after doing the background, but I've ended up like it being quite <laughs> organised. Oh, good stuff. Good. Yeah, and a lot of these charities, unfortunately, because of COVID and people haven't had, you know, people have been without work, uh, charities are suffering, aren't they? They're not getting the money they used to get. So. Right, I like that. Should I do some big bold dots now, do you think? Or do you think that would be a bit too much? Or should I do it with the little, these ones? Those ones might be better. These. these are like an alternative splatter, aren't they? Like an open splatter. <laughs> it's making me smile. That works nicely. Just helps just to draw that blue a bit further out. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Moth. Oh, oh, you're a oh, I'm trap you in my drawer. If you did them in pink, they would look like flowers, yes. So they can look like weird dandelion heads instead. Yeah, it's ended up being slightly autumnal again, but no, I like that. I can't wait to see this one cut up. Right. I think I'm I'm going to have to stop there as well, guys. Very different looks. Oh, I didn't end up using that square one, did I? The little, that one. But I don't think I need it now, because I had all those little... So. Good night, Nessa. Oh, I've got parcels for people to send off. Sorry, I've had a bit of a crazy week, so I have got a basket of parcels I need to put mail, mail uh, postage on, and I've got cards to go out, thank you cards and things. Yeah, Steph, I think I, I would, you know, what? I, I don't know, my, I'm not medic trained, but I thought instinctually, heart, just get your heart checked to make sure that your heart works properly. Or 
you know, even if the doctor doesn't say oh, there's anything specifically wrong, that you just look at your diet and just stuff that will support your heart. But, yeah. Thank you, Pam. Oh, hi, Janice. <laughs> yes, so this one I did with Mango Melody, Bermuda Bay, Old Olive and just Jade. I think that was right. Oh, an early espresso. Did I put that back? There we go. So that was that one. And the two stamp sets I used were Pattern Play, that one, and Tasteful Touches. Okay, so two quite very different ish stamp sets, really. This was very kind of like modern and geometric, and this is quite it's got floral elements, but you've got that tiny little geometric there. And it was just nice to add that little bit of leafage to, to sort of soften the whole thing. And then we discovered that those those two match so you can make them look like little viruses floating around your page if you want to so there we go right so that was that one and then this one gone slightly feminine very slightly and I really like this color scheme it's so pretty Night of Navy cinnamon cider calypso coral Petal, oh, oh, look, I've just stuck the other, I've just stuck the new one on because the colour, it lost its colour. Petal pink and grey granite. And just with the addition of beautiful autumn to that one. That one there, to the pattern plate and the tasteful touches. So, just to give that little bit of a focal point, so... Yeah, we don't we don't like to talk about it too much, do we, Sheila? <laughs> oh dear, I love how we're relating. Yeah, yes, and the little leaves. Those little wheaty, leafy things. Oh, there we go. Oh, now was I going to do? A, I was going to do a giveaway. find all the cards from the other day. I think they're here. Right. Let me just check. I've got them all here. One, three, four, five, six. Oh, I have eight, nine. Right. I'm going to do a quick giveaway, everybody. So if you commented on that video the other day, then... It was this one, wasn't it? How to mix designer series paper with your stamped one sheet wonders. So I'm going to grab the link, go to comment picker, YouTube comment picker. And we're going to choose a winner. Paste. Get YouTube comments. So there were 16 comments. Start. And the winner is Laurie Robinson. My favourite is number seven. Oh, right. Hold on. Let me have a think. What would have been number seven? I think it would have been one of the blue ones, wasn't it? I did those ones first and then I did those ones no, I did those ones last. It'll be will it'll be one of these. Right, I think I'll choose somebody else. So congratulations Laurie. Laurie, you need to contact me, ruthtrice at gmail.com and send me your address. Pick another winner. Start. Hopefully it won't be a number seven that they've chosen. If it is, then they'll have to have something else. Alison Hockney, uh, watching you help me get through the ironing. I love it. Uh, number eight. Oh, that's good. So 
Alison number eight and who was the other person? Suzanne. Is it Suzanne? I should have written it down. Alison number eight. Did I say Suzanne? Was that right? Laurie, Laurie, not Alison. Laurie. Number seven. Okay, right. I'm going to keep those there. I'll go back and watch the video and figure out which one was seven and which one was eight. There we go. Right, thank you for your company tonight, guys. And I hope to see you tomorrow at some point, Tuesday. So remember, Esther goes live on Facebook at 8.30 and then she goes does it live on YouTube as well. And she did an unboxing of her the new stamp and emboss stamp no cut and emboss machine, which I think we're going to call the bossy, just for short, you know the bossy machine. It's just easier, isn't it? Stamp and emboss is a little bit of a mouthful. So, uh, thanks, Ruth. My favourite is number two. This one. Ah, cool. I think it's mine too, actually. But I'm very much looking forward to incorporating those patterns, these ones, into other One Sheet Wonders. So, yeah, it, this is going to be fun. I'm not so bit of so, such a big fan of the, the sentiments, but these patterns are awesome. Good value for money as well, because you've got loads. Loads. Right, take care, guys. Your bossy comes tomorrow, Jazz and Janice. Oh, exciting. Oh, the boss and the boss and the baby boss. <laughs> That's cool. That's a good idea. Yeah. Right. Thanks for all your tips and tricks and things like that and your medical suggestions to each other. That's fabulous stuff. Yes. Go and get yourself checked out. I think that's, you know, there's no harm in doing that, you know, and, and if you don't, if one doctor doesn't listen to you, try and find, find one that does. So. Right, lots of love. Take care, everybody. Bye.